عبد الكراجيس الضعيف والمسكين والظالم والجهل and but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence Alhamdulillah in these days of difficulty in Ayat Al-Kareem Allah describes I would not punish them while you are amongst them and that and while they are asking for forgiveness. When Allah describing in Holy Qur'an that I would not punish them while you Sayyidina Muhammad are amongst them and they're asking for forgiveness. And only Allah come into our lives and teach us in these days especially. This is an immense najat and salvation for believers. That as soon as you make durood al-sharif and make salawat upon the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad Allah allows the soul of Prophet to accompany you and begin to praise upon your soul. And this becomes our companionship with an immense reality. As much as we're making durood al-sharif, as much as the soul and the light of Sayyidina Muhammad is amongst us, with us, dressing us, blessing us and inspiring, ask Allah's forgiveness. We make our istighfar and become a shield of protection because Allah's words are true that I will not punish them because you are amongst them. Means Ahlul Dhikr and Ahlul Ishq Nabi Ahbab al Nabi Allah's promise for them is that you keep that love and you keep that presence and my qadab and anger doesn't come near you. Because that's the grand intercession, the immense reality of the light of Prophet when it accompanies us, it intercedes. And what Allah looks to that soul and sees the light of Sayyidina Muhammad accompanying them, praising and praying upon them that, Ya Rabbi forgive them because they love me, forgive them because they're making their salawats and they're making their istighfar and forgiveness. And that's why they teach then the greatest and most powerful tool Allah has given to us is durood al-sharif and salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad Because it is the dhikr of Allah Because immediately those people say, well, what about Allah Allah's dhikr is in the salawat. As soon as we say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad We have praised upon Allah Praised upon the Muhammadan reality. And as a result, Allah brings the soul of Prophet to be with us. In reality, our light is allowed to enter into His holy presence. And in that presence, Allah has promised there is no punishment. Not punishment for my anger doesn't reach you because the light of Prophet is interceding for you, taking away the badness, taking away my divine anger. So the greatest weapon that Allah gave to us, that's why they keep teaching, make istighfar. At the beginning of the day when you ask, what kind of awrad, this awrad, should I do that awrad? Do the wazifas that were given for the tariqahs like your dial-up. You do that religiously every day, three shahada, seven day istighfar, that makes the connection with the shaykhs. And then for the dhikr, all day long istighfar, astaghfirullah al-azeem wa tubu alayk. I'm asking your istighfar and your forgiveness with sifat al-azeem, that your might and majesty that no one can imagine, Ya Rabbi. My existence like an epsilon that I'm not even existing, existing in this universe, by that greatness Ya Rabbi just wipe away my bad characters. And after the midday, making durood al-sharif. Like we showered, we washed, the spiritual wudu was istighfar. 
Our spiritual wudu is a sikhfar that we're asking out of Bistafirullah Ladeem wa tubu ilay. And Allah address Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Now that we're washed and purified and showered, begin to make your durood as Sharif and salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad And as a result of that salawat, every imperfection to be cleaned, every bad character to begin to be taken away, every bad desire to be taken away. And that immense protection, immense light of Allah's rida and satisfaction is what dresses us. And the immensity of it can't be understood. It's the source of knowledges. Well, how knowledge comes to somebody? Through your secret? Is there but only one secret? And that's the soul and the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad I was a hidden treasure wanting to be known. There's only one treasure and Allah hid that in the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad There's no two treasures. I don't have a treasure and you have a different treasure. There's only one treasure box. It's how much will Allah allow us to take from it. So if they think they have a treasure but they don't make durood, they don't make salawat, where is that treasure coming from? This treasure we talk about is but one, La ilaha illallah hidden within Muhammadun Rasulullah I was hidden treasure wanting to be known. By making this durood the sharif, by having this ishq, by having this love, Allah allows that heart to open and take from it its treasure, take from it its realities. The greatest weapon we have in times of difficulty, sadness and fear is this durood the sharif, this praisings upon Sayyidina Muhammad that allows us to draw near Take away every bad character, every bad anger, every bad desire. For how can somebody who making the the sharif not have wudu? How can somebody making the the sharif be yelling and angry? They're accompanying an immense light. They feel the ishq and the nearness of that light. They feel the warm embrace of that light and that it facilitates everything for them. It takes away every difficulty, everything that becomes locked, that love opens. Every door that's locked, that ishq and that love comes and, oh my son, don't worry, here, I open the door for you. They think it's Allah but Allah is the one who locked it. He's locking it because He says, you're trying to open a door that's not meant for your hand. The hand of Muhammadun Rasulullah is the only hand I'm responding to when I lock something. Prophet has to be with us in our life, Salawat al-Fatiha. That open what's locked because he's the opener. He comes and opens for us just to visualize that every difficulty in our life, Prophet comes to get that door and open it. So go through, your life will be good. Difficulties will be lessened, hardships can be endured with the ishq and with the love and muhabbat. The immensity, of it, the immensity of it can't be understood. Those whom don't know, they missed an immense gift from Allah They struggle so hard to open everything in their life. And they have failure after failure. 
and they think if they hit the door a little bit harder, they do it a little bit more, they do a little bit like this, they do a little bit like that. And you see them suffering so much to open what Allah has closed. And when Allah wants to give a gift, that's what we say is, is such an immense gift, immense blessing. When we say ni'mat is a blessing, an immense blessing. When you love that which Allah loves, it's a hand that comes and begins to open every door that's locked. If it's good for you, if it's not good for you that same hand guards you and says, no need to open that, that will be a difficulty for you. And when you accompany these aashiqeen, you see how Allah open everything for them out of that love and that ishq. Because that hand of love, the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad is upon them and it's not their hand that threw, it's not their hand that did anything but it was the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad that Allah's hand is upon that hand. If that hand comes, everything locked will be opened. And in days of difficulty that has to be achieved. The salawats have to be increased, the love and the ishq and the muhabbat has to be increased. All the good deeds and good actions are to bring about these good characteristics. Feeding people, taking care of people, doing khidmat, being of service, living a life of service, it brings the pleasure and the happiness of Sayyidina Muhammad So that he sees this character is serving, this character is trying to be of service to the community, to all of humanity. As a result he begins to intercede for that individual that, I know you're coming short. But by my presence your character will be hudan, you'll be guided, you'll be forgiven, you'll be dressed, you'll be blessed. As a result my accompanying you will begin to dress you and Allah's ridan satisfaction will begin to pour upon you. And in this holy month of Surat al-Jinn what we have? Hajj Shahid a surah and immensity for this month. Surat al Jinn that governing this dunya, that imagine the 72 is the gate of heaven because this dunya is a reflection. So, all our holy nights are 27th. Why? Because we live in a mirror upside down. Everything is a reflection. So every gate here is 27, there is 72. So in that month of Prophet why Elizabeth Jad drawing our attention to the jinn? Right? Because it's the unseen kingdom of Allah That our faith is not just what you see, not you just go to Jummah, but faith and iman is, is belief. Belief did not occur on what you saw, that's not belief. Going to Jummah is not iman because you, you see it. Things that are what you call tangible, huh? but Allah counts non-tangible, NFTs. Tangible? What value does that have? You saw it, big deal, you did it. Iman is, is to believe in what you didn't see. And there's an entire kingdom, there's an entire power that is affecting you at every level. It's making you sick, it's making you crazy, it makes every type of difficulty upon you. They knew before, every dis-ease, every sickness 
had to do with an unseen energy. But then they lost belief and went towards the science. And all the magicians and warlocks, then they became scientists. They had the same tubes but fancier outfits. Right, so in before the warlocks, you saw them with one eye and they were boiling something or take this potion and drink this. Now they wear a nice white robe and they boil the same potions. Yeah. But they took away belief because people wanted to go where they could touch. So what Allah is drawing our attention to the month of Prophet is that you have to believe. And if you don't rise from what is tangible to what is not tangible, you haven't risen in your faith, you have no faith. Faith is to believe in that which you don't see of the angels, the books, destiny, good or bad, and the Day of Judgment, the Prophets, everything is based on belief and there's an entire entity and creations that are affecting everything. And as a result tariqahs come to teach about the malakut, the world in which you don't see, a kulli shay. But it has every authority over you in your physical world, whom understand and control and their power comes from malakut, they have supreme power over dunya. And that's that hand that we're talking about. It's not a physical power. But though, those whom Allah train, that they train into the unseen world and their life is about unseen energy, the unseen kingdom, Allah's majestic oceans of power and Allah describes them, kulli shay, malakut, it is kulli shay, it controls and has authority over everything. What from Surat al Yaseen? And to it you will go back to that authority. But the hand that reaches malakut, and the heavenly world is a hand that authorized with power and can move everything in dunya. So they don't go for the dunya authority but the training is to go into the world of light authority. And in Surah Jinn is directing our attention, there's an entire kingdom that you're not familiar with and Allah's creation and they can cause great grief upon you or they can be a tremendous support for you. Those whom have given themselves to Allah and to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad they are an immense support for believers, especially in the last days. And alhamdulillah that Naqshbandiyat al-Aliyya from the heart of the Sultan al-Awliya that's what they're teaching, that's their only interest. They have no interest of dunya teaching. Their only teaching is how to reach to the malakut, how to take into that hand of power, how to grab that hand of power, how to receive that power. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi ala aliyul adhim. There is no help, hawla and no quwwah. There's no help and no power that can reach to you except if you tapped into that energy because the power of Allah comes to no one except Sayyidina Muhammad And as a result of that Divine energy dressing Prophet then our life is to reach the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad Inna ladheena yubayyuna ka inam yubayyuna Allah. That's why Allah is, is telling us, take your whole life is to take your bayat. Your whole Islam was to take your bayat 
And it's the only thing nobody knows anymore. They think it's something ajeeb. What are you doing? What's bayat for? What do you mean bayat for? The companions all had bayat with Sayyidina Muhammad and Prophet Sallallahu bayat with Allah Our whole life was to take that hand, the imitated hand of the shaykhs into which we took the hand and completed our covenant. And as a result of taking the hand Allah now you're on a path of your tariqah. Because we started in, in Surah Tawbah that Allah described that they have a bayat, they have a pledge and allegiance. Don't break your pledge and allegiance because it's to the detriment of your own soul. You don't harm Allah and you don't harm the shaykhs but it's the covenant in which you gave of your soul. When Allah created you and gave to you your destiny, alastu bi rabbikum wa qalu bala, am I not your Lord? And we said, yes, bala ya Rabbi, wrote for us our destinies and said, you are with this shaykh, this shaykh, this shaykh, this shaykh, we said, yes. Our life was to come to this earth and take our covenant. As soon as we took our bayat, we were now on our path of Islam. Without the bayat there is no Islam. Everything is all jibri jash, it's all over the place. That was not the covenant that you came, you found Joma, and you went out, you came back, did what you wanted but was to honor your covenant with Allah That's why it started in Surah Tawbah of our journey. So that's the importance is that your tariqah was a means for your bayat. Tariqah wasn't your enrichment, wasn't only the source of your knowledges, wasn't the source of your barakah and blessings. But Allah wanted us to fulfill our covenant, those whom He destined and loved, I want you to fulfill the covenant you gave to me in paradise. And that's why it's an immense love and an immense gift. Why others don't have it we don't know, we pray for Allah to forgive them. But from what He did grant of us. That I granted you your Islam and your real Islam can never be real without reaching the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad and we proved many times, even you think you pray, you fast, you think you have Islam, you have Iman but you yet don't even fulfill the first usul. Your shahada is a… Akbar, your first usul is a lie. What's the first usul? Shahadat and Islam is a lie. Do you witness Allah or Sayyidina Muhammad Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa habibahu wa rasuluhu. Do you witness that? So proof you haven't even completed one pillar of Islam. So Islam was not real for you, not real for anyone. So if they thought they came and they accomplished something with Islam, in this way of awliya they are teaching us, be very humble, make lots of istighfar because you didn't do it, you're just playing. When Allah really wants you to find Islam, reach Islam, complete your Islam, He leads you to the tariqahs because they are the path to the hand, they are the path to the hand because that's their symbol. Oh, so you come tariqah, bayat, bayat, I want to take bayat, right? Because I want to take to the hand. I want to fulfill my covenant with Allah that, Ya Rabbi I'm here, I gave my hand back. I surrender myself, my will, whatever destiny you gave to me, whatever will you gave to me, only gift you can give back to Allah is your will. 
What Allah want from your money? That was for you so that He would purify it and send a hundred times or thousand times more. What Allah want from your salah? Is praying is for you, Allah doesn't take power from it. The only gift that you can give to Allah is the only gift that He has given to you is your free will. Your choice to say, I can do whatever I want. As soon as you put your hand in the ladina yubayyunaka, inna ma yubayyun Allah, my hand is with your hand Ya Rabbi, my hand is with the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad I surrender my will and I give back onto you what you have given to you, get given to me is my free will I give back to you Ya Rabbi. And that's why the schools then come and begin to teach, do like this, do like that, do like this, do like that. It's the greatest gift that you can give to Allah Ya Rabbi I don't want my choices, I don't want my will, let your will be done. Let thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Every book came and gave the same pledge that give your will back to Allah and He'll give you His kingdom within your heart. So the baya was to complete this Islam, was to take the path of the reality of Islam so that I could submit my will and Allah's kingdom to begin to enter into my heart. Under my will is my kingdom, my kingdom is filled with shayateen. If I surrender my kingdom and the kingdom of Allah enter within my heart and my soul then it's all of the heavens and they come with Allah's might and majesty to destroy the satanic reality and to destroy all the bad characteristics. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us with the immensity of the bayat, the immensity of Allah granting us to complete our deen. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.